In this video, I'll be working through the question you see on the screen from paper 3.2 from 2024 of the Cambridge A-Level exam. If you're looking for a different question from this paper, check out the description below for a link to a playlist. And if you're looking for a different paper entirely, have a look around on my channel. I'll be doing all this on a whiteboard, hopefully just like you're used to your teacher doing. But remember, we're not in a classroom, we're on YouTube. So take advantage of that. Use the pause, uh, rewind and fast forward uh, buttons. Um, if you find this video or any of my videos useful, I would greatly appreciate liking, subscribing or even sharing. The first part of question seven asks us to show this a trigonet trigonometric identity that they show us here. Basically, what we always have to do in these is play around with one side until they look at the other side, look like the other side. In this case, we actually have to play around with both sides until they look like each other. Also, we're gonna have to remember a lot of um, the identities they give us. We don't have to prove everything they give us. If they've given us it in our formula table, which I guess I'll throw it up on board now. Um, if any of these formulas, uh, if you wanna use any of them, you can, and we are gonna use one of them. One of them that should jump out at us is the right-hand side. I, I'd probably just put two and equals instead of uh, this defined as every time, is a uh, cosine, uh, cosine two theta is the same as two cosine squared theta minus one. Now again, we don't have to prove this. Uh, the proof, I, I had a, a quick look at it when I was doing this question. It's, um, it's basically cosine of, yeah, let me write some things down here. Cosine of A plus B will prove it. The problem is how do you prove this? And you prove this using cosine A minus B. Uh, how do you prove that? Uh, you end up proving that with uh, sort of drawings. Um, think of a circle here. If this is the angle A, and maybe this guy here is the angle B, playing around with the triangles you find in here of cosine, sine, you'll end up getting the formula you give there. With that formula, you can prove this one. With this one, you can prove uh, this one here. Anyway, that's where it, that all comes about from. Um, we're also, I guess, while you're doing this, you'll end up using um, cosine squared plus sine squared theta equals one. We'll also use that in a moment, actually straight away. Uh, because whenever I see cosine squared, or in this case, to the power of four, because they're quite similar, I start thinking of these ones up here. Um, uh, which one we choose to, we want things to look like cosine, so let's get rid of sine. Uh, so this formula also tells us that sine squared is equal to one minus cosine squared. So we can just change this with this. So I'll show you what I mean. This would become cosine to the power of four minus this squared, one minus cosine squared, all squared. And we can square this out. There's another way to do this question, by the way, I'll do it in a moment. Uh, we can square all this out and we'd get uh, cosine to the power of four. Uh, this squared would be plus with this minus, we'd have minus cosine to the uh, power of four. These will cancel. Let me do that now. Uh, in here also we get one times this and this times one. That'd give us a minus two cosine squared by another minus. So we'd have plus two cosine squared theta, just like here. And we get one by one by a minus. So we get minus one. And this the same on both sides. So that's, that's how you do this question. Uh, another interesting way to do it would be to notice that this is the difference of squares. You could rewrite this as cosine, uh, uh, yeah, cosine squared theta minus sine squared theta multiplied by cosine squared theta plus um, sine squared theta. That's the difference of these squares. This is just one. This goes towards one. So it just multiplies, well sorry, is one. Um, and it just multiplies this. So we're left with just this. You'd be tempted, these are the difference of squares as well, but that's a bit of a dead end. Uh, once again, we just put sine squared in. We get minus one. So this be just becomes cosine minus uh, one minus minus cosine plus cosine squared theta. This plus this is two minus one. So again, you get the, the same answer. 
Okay, that's two different ways to do part A. Let's move on to the much harder part B. I'll clear off all this. Right, on to part B. It's a it's a big nasty looking question and honestly it's I think it's a pretty hard question to reliably do. We are going to have to rely on the formulas I put on the screen earlier. I'll, I'll put them up again. Um, all these trigonomic identities. We're going to use a, a few of these again. First one is the one we've defined. This first term here, we're going to replace it with what we got in the first half. I'll write that out in a moment. The next one is this. We can actually replace this. Um, first of all, we can notice that this is two sine theta, cosine theta, all squared. That's the first thing you pretty much have to notice to be able to do this question. And then we need to notice that this two sine, cosine uh, uh, theta is actually equal to sine two theta. And again, this is all still squared. So that's something we need to know. So let's um, let's add in the thing we already know from part one, and we'll say this entire thing is equal to the integral of cosine two theta, and then plus sine two theta squared, and all of this is uh, integrated by d theta. This now looks a lot more manageable. Maybe we could go ahead and replace something here. But we're actually still a bit stuck. You could try substitution, because it looks like oh, the integral of this is equal to this, but they never divide, or they're adding each other. So like this is fine, we can integrate this. In fact, we'll probably ignore this part going forward. It's this integral. So like what I mean there is if we separate this into two integrals, this one's fine. It's this one, um, it's this one here that's difficult to do. So how do we do that? Um, you need to you need to use a, another one of our identities, and that is cosine two a is equal to one minus two sine uh, sine theta squared. Now this one is I think quite a leap to notice that this is similar to this here. But it, it is, this has a sine squared. Uh, we can bring this squared inside here. And this is a sine squared, and this is a sine squared. So if I rearrange this one over here, sorry, this should be A, by the way. This is a more general form. If I rearrange this, I could get sine squared A is equal to, let's see, uh, is equal to one minus cosine two A divided by uh, two. So anywhere you find a sine squared a, because of this formula, you can replace it with this. Now that might not seem clear, well, except this question does come up regular enough, but it might not seem obvious we need to do that here, but we do, that's how we sign, uh, we, inter we integrate a sine squared. So let's uh, go ahead and do that. Uh, let's move all the way over here. Uh, let's go ahead and integrate this one. Now get it out of the way. The integral of cosine is, is, is sine. Uh, positive, I'm just checking that. Um, so the integral of cosine is, is sine. Uh, leave whatever here is alone once it's simple. But it's not simple. We need to use the chain rule here. When we integrate something complicated, um, something differentiable that's in here, we have to fix that little cheat by differentiating it and dividing the answer. So the derivative of this is just two. So we just divide that by two. So that's the integral of this, that's very manageable. But this one, and uh, we're gonna change that from this to become, we're gonna use this. So sine squared of anything is equal to, let me write it here, is equal to one minus cosine two times what was in here. So two times what was in here is four theta, all divided by two. Now this becomes very integratable. This is easy. This can be split into two parts, a half, and the other is just, um, we can run the half outside, just cosine four theta, which is very similar to integrating here. Let me clear off um, all of this. I'll move this line up here and we'll continue on. Okay, I've just rewrote what was here, up here, and I separated out the one over two and the minus cosine four theta over two. 
So we have these two new integrals. Remember, this one is still evaluated at the same thing. What was it? Uh, pi over eight and minus pi over eight. We'll, we'll fix that in a moment. I'll just call it all i so I can write it a little easier. Um, a half a sine two theta. So what's this become? The integral of a half is quite easy to do. That's just um, plus a half a theta. The half could be brought outside, leave a one in if you'd rather. Because I will bring it outside here. I'm going to bring out minus a half. I'm going to bring the minus a half outside and just integrate cosine four theta. So just like before, cosine integrates into a sine uh, four theta. But four theta is not simple. It's not just theta. It needs to be, um, a chain rule needs to fix this mistake. So we differentiate four theta, get four, and divide it out front. So one over four appears in here. And, and that's it. All of this still has to be evaluated at pi over eight and minus pi over eight. So let's start doing that. Let's start filling it in. Sine of two times this is sine of pi over four, which I'll have to read from my notes here, but is I believe one over square root two multiplied by a half, because one over two square root two. And um, pi over eight in here is easy enough. It's uh, pi over 16. Uh, this is one over eight multiplied by sine pi over two, which is one, uh, becomes minus uh, one over um, yeah, minus one over eight. Um, and then the second row, we get minus when this goes in. And um, this goes in, we get minus of this, minus, minus. We end up with just plus that, same number. Uh, same happens here, we get, uh, this is minus of this, but it's minus, minus. So we get the same number again. Um, and the same happens here. Uh, yeah, minus 90 degrees is just a minus number, minus, minus, same number as we got here, minus one over eight. So we add all these together, there's just two of all of them. So for example, we there's two of these, so that's just a two on top here, cancels down, we just have one over square root of two. There's two of these, cancels in, we get pi over eight. And there's two of these, we get minus one over four. And uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's the final answer for part B. A lot of room to make mistakes in there. I hope you managed to keep up with um, what I did there, and I hope I was explained what I did clearly. Um, if you do have any follow-up questions though, just put them in the comments below. I'll do my best to answer. Thanks for watching. Have a good day.